Tutor, I'm here with the third part of the painting tutorial of the Bermin Lord. If you want to know how I arrived to this point here, uh, you should uh, watch part one and two if you have not done before. There I explain how I paint the different parts. In this second part, <coughs> we are going to focus on trying to start putting these two parts together. To do that, I want to do the tail and I want to do these small rats and also finalize this rock here. I want to add some green to give the sensation of more humid environment. Now it looks quite dry. Okay, so uh, if you like this channel, please subscribe, and give a like, comment, and you also can support me uh, by buying my virtual shop. I'm doing some mugs and t-shirts with pictures of my paint jobs. If this is something that is interesting, you can find everything, all the ways to support me in the description of the video. And now let's start cracking in on the paint job. So we are going to start, uh, we are going to continue on the rock. Okay, and I want to add a little bit of green on this uh, shading. So I'm going to use uh, uh, quite a dark green. Uh, we can use uh, how it's called this, we can use um, Bieltan green or there is also a darker one that is, uh, in that case, is, I, I think this is an old one, Thraka green but I'm pretty sure there is the, the equivalent to that one or well, I think it's Bieltan, I don't know if they have changed but I want to use the one, this one that is a little bit darker okay, uh, I'm, well, I still have some old colors as you can see and we are going to apply this mainly on the recesses okay so we are going to apply this here okay we are going to apply this as well in some of the recesses okay this will give a greenish tonality that will help also to match with the greenish aspect we want to give in some of the weapons and some of the magic of this cave and so I like to play with the colors. We also have this brown that we have done before. You can see I'm applying this green mainly on these deeper recesses. I mean, here we can just apply it in some of these uh, deep because the green the green part will go first on the parts that are uh, protected, right? Where on the ins on on this crevices on the cracks of the rocks. Okay, so oops. We are going to put, to put a little bit more else here, okay, and we will wait this device before keep working. I will, each time I put I put a wash, I prefer to wait that this completely dries before doing any further step, okay. So I will wait at this device, and while this is drying, we can paint uh, the tail of the escaping. So to do that, I want to go the tail for a very dark color, uh, almost um, touching the purple, okay? And I will use a scale 75 uh, color. So we are going to use, I'm thinking I'm going to use this one, okay? This called Indian Shadow. It's very reddish, have a small touch of purple, and I will say maybe an equivalent to this one can be as well this one here. To score four. Let's do the next. Uh, I will use this one, okay, but I also like to change a little bit, but the other option is to use two score four. Any of the two will give a very nice dark tonality. That is what I'm looking. So I put here a little bit of my palette. I will uh, take a big brush, take some water, thin down a little bit more the paint. Okay, you can use thinner, but to be fair, I paint a lot with water and for me it's working quite well. And we are going to apply a thin layer. This is important that it's thin. We don't want to clock any detail on the tail, okay? So we are going to apply this. Don't worry about the spikes. We are going to do the spikes later on. But it's important to... And the fur, I, I decided not to do the fur uh, before gluing because it's you're rubbing the paint very easily so I prefer to do the full all the all the uh, hair once the metal is glued okay so I will do this double tail I will paint it with this um, reddish color and I will be back once this is done 
So once the tail have dry, I'm going to use Bookman's Glow, okay, uh, to do the different, yeah, you know, this part of the tail. Okay, to do this. We are going to start with this. We are going to do them all. Okay. It's not going to be that noticeable everywhere. But we are going to start like that. This is going to be super time consuming because we want to do the whole tail like that. If you see that the contrast is not what you were looking for, the other option is to go with this color, that is pink flesh from the scale 75. I think I will change to have a little bit more contrast in some parts, especially in this part here that is lighter. So let me show you. Over here a little bit. This will be extremely time consuming. Okay, so let's paint this block. Here we go. So what we do is we take very calm and we are going to paint each of these estimations we can do how I do to do that to do this part on camera of course I will not do all in camera because it would be too long for a video to be fair so we are going to do this but I think I make a small mistake so I'm going to do this one this one okay and then we try to turn up Okay, then we go on this side to put a little more of thing. We do this one, and this one. And in some places you will not see, so you because I have to realize that the <coughs> this is not that well in grey sometimes all depends on the mold direction of the part so because it's turning but this is the idea, right? is to do all this once now we go up This is what I have not done And as I said, this is going to be super time consuming because we have quite a big tail here to paint But I expect the final result will be very nice So I'm going to put it together in one. Okay. So we go here in the back. Then we turn up and we join with the part that is coming from the top. Okay, and we keep doing all the tail. 
So I will do the whole tail very calmly and as you can see here I will try to do the whole tail and I'm back once it is done. So be patient here, it's going to be slow and you can see here I was doing the Bookman Glow as well but I will think I think I will keep going for with this although this have much higher contrast. I will keep going with that. So start from one side and go and do all the thing. Okay? So I do that and I come back once it's done. Okay, once we have done all these rings on the tail, and you can see they are not all perfect, so it took quite a good bunch of time. Now I'm going to apply a Reglan play shade on the miniature, okay? So we are going to, on the tail, sorry, not on the miniature, on the tail. Uh, the objective is to smooth a little bit these transitions that can be a little bit too harsh in some points, okay? We take a, I'm going to take a bigger, bigger brush and we are going to put it this all over the tail. Okay. Um, important that we don't miss any part. And the paint is not pulling as usual. This time we do any wash. Okay. I'm going to apply this. Then we need to wait this device before doing the next step. So I apply this, I let it dry, and then I'm back. Okay, so this hole looks like one the wash has dried out. Okay, you can see now the, it's looking uh, less stark, the color changes, but I, I will need to do a little bit of clean up. Okay, I realize in some places the dark lines are too thin or are not very visible. So I will take again the um, Indian shadow, it's called from a scale 75. So the darker color we have used. Okay, does not matter who, what color you use. And we are going to redo some of these lines. So especially if we have almost covered them before. The intention here, we keep this uh, shading around the spikes. I think it's making, it's giving a very nice look. Okay, and here the point is just to clean up if we see that in some place, in places the dark line is not very visible. And I don't, I'm not too concerned if it's a little bit irregular, all this pattern, I think uh, makes sense. Then we are talking about organic thing, okay, and I'm quite happy how at the end is looking like. Okay, here we have to check. Okay, well, it's okay here. And now, next step, keep working on the tail. I'm going to apply uh, the same color we have applied on the armor, but on these things. Uh, we are going to use Balthazar Gold. No, I will, I will go, I was thinking Balthazar Gold, but I will go for something more contrasting. I will use uh, Retributor Armor, okay? And we are going to put this on these rings that the Vermin Lot has on the time, okay? So we are going to apply this. And the point is we want to contrast it. If I go for a, a, a bronze color here, the co uh, I mean a, a copper color, or more uh, brown metal, it will not have the right contrast. So I prefer to go for this more. And I want to do this now, and then I will do the rings, and we work 
uh, on the right on the base and we, we are going to glue this soon on the base okay so I do that on all the rings we don't need to do the blades the blades will do it in more uh, steel color okay but all these ornaments I wanted to do it like if it's uh, bronze looking like or tin yeah okay so I will do them all and I'm back once I have done the other rings okay I have painted the different rings he has on the tail okay uh, I will wait a day dry and while this is drying, as usual, I will paint another part. So I will go back to the base and I will start painting the rats. So to do the rats, I will just apply uh, or paint them in different colors. So I'm going to start, for example, with a uh, gother brown. Although it's not going to be the most visible one, I think. Because everything is brown here, right? So let's start first with more from brown, okay? And we are going to apply this on some of the most hidden rats. Remember with this, this one here. And just hidden. Okay. And we paint all except the head and tail and the little the little feet and hand if it's visible. Okay, so this is not going to be visible. So something like that. Maybe here at the bottom. Okay. Let's do another right. So let's do, for example, this big one here. Okay, as you can see. These big miniatures have a lot of work, okay? I want to show... For me here the intention is more for you to see how I approach the paint job of these big miniatures and what steps I follow. This rat seems like to have a broken leg. Okay, we want to go just next to the head. We can go a little bit and we can go here we will do the back and you say we can leave if you want the feet of the pow say we can leave the pow unpainted okay I do the other right here in front and I'm back so to add some variation, I'm going to paint this front rat with bane blade brown to give more a greenish look to this one, okay? Here I made a mistake, I was just correcting it. This is yeah, this what this is a rat as well. Okay, it's very weird how this rat is hiding, it's almost mimicking the rock, but this is a rat. Oops, and now I make another mistake here. Okay. So I will paint this one that is here, it's almost hidden with a uh, bamboo brown. Have, um, um, I make a mistake and I put some uh, too early, I was doing an experiment. But yeah, just take into account that we paint these two with bamboo brown to give a, a different uh, coloration. Okay. Uh, to make especially when you paint swarms I find that it's very effective to give different colors to the different rats this will give the sensation of will break the, the uniformity will give the sensation of variety and here we have not that many but anyway I think it's a nice touch to paint at least with two different colors for the four of the rats. Okay, here we have the tail. 
Okay, I will leave it like that, I think. I will think I will do everything up to the feet. Okay. Then later on we can put the... What I will do is uh, I will clean this with dark brown. <coughs> Way to have... <coughs> oh, sorry for that. I will take dry at bark. And I will... Here I missed before to do this part of the ground because it's within the rats, so I just put dry bark there and we'll correct these mistakes. Okay. And now we put a little bit of more from brown on the rat that was missing. So yeah, nobody's perfect and we all make mistakes. So the important one important thing is how to uh, how to correct the mistakes. I would wait at this device, and when it has dry, we are going to apply the wash. So as we, as you remember, we did the bolt on the tail. So we can go back to the tail now. So this is why I like to do two things at the same time. Okay. So let's go back to the main body. And we are going to apply, again, Reglan Flesh on the tail. Okay. So I'm going to take this. And... We apply this all around on these gold things. Okay. If you go a little bit on the flesh, don't worry, because this is the color we use for the flesh, and uh, it's not going to make any problem or any. Uh, yeah, we won't look bad. That's what I want to say. Okay, you can see this quite fast. So I will do the other rings and then we wait at this device so I will do wait at this device and I'm back so while the rings uh, were on the tail and where I put the wash is drying uh, we are going to also put a wash here on the fur of these rats okay so we have uh, yeah, we will put that and then we are going to do the part that are skin color okay I use Agrax air shade uh, as, as usual to do browns and we have to we'll pay a lot of attention to the not to miss any part and just have white where I will paint flash later on okay so you want to play this you have a nice shading you will see this one will look very nice I really like a lot the combination of bing red brown with aqua air shade especially when there is a nice texture Give a very nice, highly contrast uh, color that looks, yeah, looks good. Even for for, rat, for these small rats. Okay, and we have to correct this in the middle, so I will put as well here in the middle. You can go a little bit on the base. This will dry, and then we will not see the glare or the gloss, glossiness of the wash. Okay, so now I wait that this dries. I will wait that also the rings are not completely dry and I come back. Okay, next step I'm going to use built and green to put on top of these uh, golden ornaments. Also give this sensation of green that we have done in the rest of the armor. So we are going to wash it um, very we try not to put too much wash. Like for example, this is too much, we try to remove it just to filter the gold into a greenish color okay so more like trying to have a filter of green on top of this and we, um, as you can see I focus on the middle and I don't do the borders of this type of rings okay this will give this very nice green touch on, on this gold that is quite bright and this will give Thing will combine very well with the rest of the miniature. Okay. 
here you see you can have some areas more luminous than others it looks nice we are going to do the other ones okay you can see here I go all over this I try to avoid try to especially to avoid to go into the skin you don't want to dirty the skin with green I don't think it's going to be nice okay and if you watch my last paint and talk uh, this I learned by experimenting okay so this is one of the things that you if you don't try you don't know how it will work and I experimented this before on other miniatures I experimented on, on the stone castle the emeralds and also on all the sky escapements and I find that adding green on the gold can be quite interesting and touch on the gold that give a this sensation of old no I know that the gold is not rusting but this is something but it giving this sensation of dirty and it's also giving this feel that, that work very well especially on the scavenge for the rest of the uh, combining with the rest of the army and the green war stones <coughs> have a lot of issues these days on my on my throat sorry if I'm coughing a little bit too much and I'm also start notice that I'm, I'm still start using losing a little bit my voice uh, okay let's go do that and of course as as we do for any wash we wait a little bit that this dries I try to keep it uh, for the reason of the tutorial I don't know to, I don't go now to the other parts I want to keep the other parts for uh, to keep a little bit the order so I will wait now that this dries and I'm come back back to the work on the base now I'm going to use Bookman Glow to do the fleshy parts of the rats so that means we're going to do the head tails and paws okay so you have here And we keep doing all the heads and tails and I miss the tail there and we have to do it later. Let's finish the head first here. And I keep doing that for all the rats. So I'll do the tail here before we forget. We'll do the tail the other on the other one. So here there's something like that. So I do the other rats and I come back. So next step, we take a regular flesh shade and we do a wash on the skin of the rats. Be sure that the skin is completely dry before doing this step. Okay. As for any wash we apply. Okay, so when you apply wash, you have to be sure that the previous layer has dry completely. If not, you are going to pull the paint. And also you have to wait that it dries completely and wait a little bit longer before doing any further step, okay? So we just wash this. Don't worry if you go a little bit into the fur. Try not to do it too much this. So I a little bit more just more carefully. I can go with this shade there, a little bit here, here, here. Okay, we want to be more careful. So they look quite nice, the right there. It's a nice detail. Okay. In that case, what I'm going to do is I will glue. No, we are ready. 
to glue the main body on the base and we are going to use plaster to do the base okay so I'm going to we have to be careful but so it goes like that so I'm going to glue it and we're going to be ready for the next steps okay here we have uh, the miniature now is glued and we are going to paint work on the fur uh, because I want to do also this part on the legs and then we are going to uh, put the glaive uh, by, uh, we are going to glue the glaive on, on the um, arm okay so the first thing I will I will uh, add uh, take the gray that we use for uh, for the hair that was this one okay it's cabin and we are going to correct or repaint all the parts where the paint have been uh, rubbed off. Okay, so we are going to do this. Okay, and clean up. Not clean up, but repaint where we have remove the paint by accident okay so I do that I make sure that I have again a good base to paint uh, that I have a good uh, solid base coat before I start doing that I'm thinking how I will do all this hair there is two options one is to work with very soft dry brushing but this will have uh, to be very careful because you can easily dirt in, uh, dirt in and clog clogginess and and make the, the the texture to look too rough. Okay, but this is a, is an, it's a good option because uh, I think the the hair here have a very nice texture and then you always can correct later on using uh, inks. Using a ink just straightforward. I don't like it too much. I don't want. I want to keep the hate the hair. Sorry, quite clear. I want to go more for a light gray than dark, very dark gray. In that case, to show the that is an ancient uh, end, right? It is quite an end. It's part of the gray seal council. So at the end these are the part of the master clan. So they are these are the biggest brothers of the glaciers. So I, now I wait that this dries and I come back. While the hair is drying, I'm going to play here um not no, 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 of course not Breglin flea shade on the gold parts and I will do the same on this hand, okay? So we are going to one of these stupid Oops. We are going to apply this on the gold and on this hand. Okay. So that way we start having the shading. I will try to point to put to go on the brown parts. Okay. I like a lot a lot how Reglan Reglan flesh shade uh, paints on top of the gold. I think it's a very nice. Combination I give a very nice contrast. Okay, we are going to do all these rings as we did on the tail. Okay, and then we are going to apply again the green wash as well. Okay, so it's the same process we did on the tail. I'm doing this now on the I mean on the vault of the tail. I'm doing now on the glaive. Okay, so I will finalize the gold and I will come back okay next step I'm going to use a little bit of dry, well, I'm going to use a little bit no I'm going to use dry brush and we will start with downstone on the gray okay so we are going to take downstone I'm using a makeup brush to do that 
way to have very soft and here we have to be extremely careful okay so we can screw up all the job we have done up to now so let's start here at the front and we're going to do very soft dive brushing just to see how it goes and let's take a little bit more if we see that it's not noticeable I will change to I generally want to go very gentle we just apply okay. and we start with that very soft and just to going to be very soft at the beginning, very difficult to see, but this is the objective, we start very, very, very little, because I will end up almost in white, okay, so we start with very little, with a very minimal impact at the beginning, you can see now I have enough have to say the texture on this hair it's very very nice and this is helping a lot okay we are going to the shoulders and you can see I'm not taking paint for a long time now but I still have enough paint in my brush to keep popping up the detail, okay? Again, this first dry brush is going to be very, very light. And it's just to start showing a little bit of detail. See? Okay. Let's go to the next color and we can work between the two colors. I'm going to use no administrator gray. This is a very light. see this one it's going to be a little bit more noticeable so be careful at the beginning really remove the paint and start very soft very gentle and see how it looks like I'm almost not playing pressure I'll just let the brush to touch very gently
take this paint that we have already put there remove a little bit and go here You see now it's more visible. Okay, so I'm going to do this. You see. And I like that some hairs I are picking up more of the color than others and have color variation. I think this is good. And this helps a lot by the sculpt of the miniature. The miniature is very well sculpted. The hair is really very nicely done. Okay. I will keep doing this on fast track and when I add it in the next color I will go slowly. step is going to be with white and here we have to be extremely careful okay so I will I want to go to go really very light I want to use white as the most extreme dry brush I almost drop the miniature okay and here I will be very careful and be we want to be very choiceful where to put it. So we will start, for example, here. Okay. We want to put it mainly on these super long hairs. And I have to say, I will. We are going to do the hair. We are going to do it in the opposite way. We are going to do first the hair, because the hair. And then I'm going to do the flesh later on. Okay. You can see I go. I will. We don't need the white everywhere. The white will give a, an extra. I mainly will use it. But you can see that it giving. It's giving this extra. shiny that will work very nicely okay I'm going to play 
these ones here at the bottom. Do I brush is to make it very thin. It's a matter of layers and passing. Try to not to go too fast. This is one mistake I was doing when time ago. I was trying to go too fast and then you can screw up very easily all the paint job with a bad dry brush. Okay. I think I'm not sure if I will do the but I like to leave it quite light. Anyway. So I think I will leave it like that. I will take a little bit more of white. I will insist a little bit more. long hairs okay. and these long hairs Okay, and I will finalize here with the dry brushing. So here you see how the hair is looking like right now. So at the end, I was thinking, and I will decide to do a wash with noon oil. This will create uh, the crevices darker. Will give, uh, will uh, increase the, the contrast on the. We start from the top parts when we do on big surfaces like this one okay, and using a very bad brush to do that and as I said I start from the top and we, we go down we have to be careful here it's going to be uh, quite nice because the hair is helping a lot to do this this type of to use washes thanks to the nice uh, sculpt of the hair but we have to be careful that it's not pulling anyway and it's not dripping down to the f right there, to the flesh or something like that for the book here there is a lot we have to be careful that will not uh, drip down to the flesh okay so in, and we have to it's quite a big surface it's quite and we have to be careful that we wash as evenly as possible here is not like a flat surface or, or big as there is so many crevices, if some part is not well done at the beginning, it's going to be okay at the end. Okay, we can repeat it later on because here is not going to be that a big deal. But we want to avoid anyway pulling and coffee stains, right? So you can see I'm doing that very carefully. I follow the direction of the hair. I keep putting this. Okay. So I will keep doing that and I will show you how it looks like and then after this step I think I will finalize here the third part where mainly we have done the tail and the fur but this is, the, this is putting the miniature in a very good shape uh, and very uh, yeah, quite advanced on the paint job. But I said, these big miniatures, it's nice to spend your time to be sure that everything is matching and just 
uh, really do the techniques nicely done and spend the time that is needed, right? So, yeah, I will finalize this wash and I come back you once this is done. Okay, once the wash has dried, this is how it looks like here. You see the fur nicely highlighted with the nice shading. So, looking quite good. And here I will finalize part 3 of this painting tutorial. Uh, where we have done the tail, the fur, and yeah, and I will keep tuned if you want to see how this evolves. So next step, we are going to work on the on the glaive. I want to have the glaive here placed, and uh, I will paint. I will work also in parallel with the orb. With the orb, okay. So once we have this done, the last step will be to do the base, and then finally the head. Okay, the head will be painted. Um, without gluing to the middle. So I will finalize here part 3. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial so far. Uh, let me know what do you think about the paint job so far. And yeah, and as usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!